I'm glad that you've joined us today for worship. But before we jump into worship, we invite you to just take a moment to, to center yourselves, just to breathe a little bit. Breathe in the life-giving Spirit of God that is present with us. And then as you exhale, let go of all that's cluttering your minds and hearts. So let's breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. We begin our worship in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm thankful for our, our young people who have been creating music for us to enhance our worship. It means so much to have that. Well, let's continue uh, our worship with uh, confessing our sin and hearing God's promise of forgiveness. Lord, we confess our failure to trust, our giving in to fear, our thoughts, words, and deeds that have kept us from loving you with heart, soul, mind, and strength and loving our neighbors as ourselves. Have mercy on us. Hear the good news. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Amen. Well, we've been following this, uh, this thread through the scriptures, this bigger story, and, and much of it is focused on promises. Most recently, we've looked at the story of, of Moses. Moses guides his people into this new relationship, new way of understanding who God is. This covenant that God says, I'll be your God, you be my people. And he gives them the commandments we heard last week to help flesh out what does this mean in my daily life to live in this covenant. And last week we looked at what happens when we forget, when we get sidetracked from that. And we're reminded throughout all this that this is a, a journey that we're on, a process we're going through. 
It was true for the ancient Israelites, just as true for us today. So let's sing a song uh, It uses that metaphor of the journey that we are sharing. What is life really all about in the struggle of faith? Hear the word reaching out to you. Jesus is alive today. We are travelers on a journey, yearning to believe. Hearts are burning, eyes are open. Our psalm for today picks up a theme that we're going to see repeated again and again in the scriptures, a theme of, of great reversals, how the downtrodden are lifted up, how the weak become strong, the poor become rich, the barren are given life. It's a psalm about hope, about the God who can do things that seem impossible. So Psalm uh, 113. Well, let's read it responsibly. I'll read a part and invite you to uh, respond. Alleluia, give praise, you servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Let the name of the Lord be blessed from this time forth and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its going down, let the name of the Lord be praised. The Lord is high above the nations, God's glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God, who sits enthroned on high, but stoops behold the heavens and the earth? The Lord takes up the weak out of the dust and lifts the poor from the ashes, enthroning them with the rulers, with the rulers of the people. The Lord makes the woman of a childless house to be the joyful mother of children. Hallelujah. All right, so let's get back to this epic story of the Bible as we trace this storyline that weaves all these stories and books uh, together. But let's do a little review, see where we've been so far. It started back with creation. All was created good, but soon uh, there was a brokenness of sin that uh, changed everything. And the rest of the Bible traces the story of how God will restore and redeem his broken creation. It's a story about love that will not let go. Uh, it's a story about faithfulness to promises. 
We saw the promise first to Abraham, right? A promise that through Abraham, God would bless the entire world. And this passed on through the generations, through difficult times. There were these 400 years where they end up being slaves in Egypt. And then we heard a couple weeks ago about the Exodus, this defining moment of liberation, the birth of a people, followed by this wilderness wandering for 40 years, in which in many ways was sort of the adolescent period uh, for them to learn the rules, test the boundaries, see what this relationship was all about. And that's what takes uh, the first five books of the Bible, gets you that basic storyline. Now from there, we, we have to take some jumps here so we're going to get through the Old Testament before Christmas. Um, and so uh, as the story goes on, the people get to the promised land. Unfortunately, it's not just empty land. People are living there in the books of Joshua and Judges. Talk about the conquest of the land. It was brutal. It was violent. It was filled with what today we would call genocide and terrorism, all done in the name of God some troubling stuff uh, and then some other time we could talk about that but I want to move this story along uh, to the past that time to now they have are settled in this land they have the commands of God to guide them but there's no central government right this the, we have this loose confederation of tribes with their own individual militias when a time comes for a leader God will raise someone up, and oftentimes we called them the judges. Not judges in the terms of being a legal expert, but more often a military leader, uh, and oftentimes spiritual leader as well. Well, the last of the judges that we encounter in the scriptures is someone named Samuel. And we talked about Samuel this, this last summer as we did our series on the story of David. And the story of David starts with Samuel uh, being the, the judge who was ruling, anointing David to become king. Saul was the last leader of the people before the beginning of the, the monarchy. But today I want to take a step back and focus not on Samuel, but on Samuel's mother, Hannah. Now Hannah was unable to have children which um, was uh, devastating in, in the culture that she lived in. Her calling, her purpose in life was that of bearing children. And if she couldn't conceive, she felt useless. She felt uh, not worth anything, in spite of all the comforting her husband gave her. So the story uh, that we're going to look at is found in the book of, of 1 Samuel. And as we pick up our story, Hannah is deep in grief, all right? And all the emotions are there. There's sadness and anger and bargaining. And she, she comes before God and she strikes a bargain. She says, if you will just give me a child, I will return the child in service to you. And so she goes to uh, a place of worship to pray. Uh, the priest mistakes her despair for drunkenness, but once she straightens him out, straightens him out on that, uh, he assures her that God will indeed hear her prayer. And she goes home, finally comforted. And lo and behold, she conceives a child, and she remembers her promise. And when the child is old enough to eat solid food, she comes and delivers him back to the temple for a life of service. And this child is Samuel. Well, what follows this uh, in, in the second chapter is, is where Hannah sings a song. A uh, song of praise to the God who can turn things around, who does what seems to be impossible. Let me read a portion of this from chapter 2. My heart exalts in the Lord. My strength is exalted in my God. My mouth derides my enemies because I rejoice in my victory. There is no holy one like the Lord. There is no one besides you. There is no rock like our God. Talk no more so very proudly. Let not arrogance come from your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. The bows of the mighty are broken, but the feeble gird on strength. Those who were full have hired themselves out for bread, but those who are hungry are fat with the spoil. The barren has borne seven, but she who has many children is forlorn. The Lord kills, brings to life. 
brings down to Sheol and raises up. The Lord makes poor, makes rich, brings low, exalts, raises up the poor from the dust, lifts the needy from the ash heap, makes them sit with princes and inherit a seat of honor. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and on them he has set the world. He will guard the feet of his faithful ones, but the wicked will be cut off in darkness, for not by might does one prevail. All right, so that's the song that, uh, that Hannah sings. But what does that mean for us? What's our takeaway from a, from a song like this? That we should strike bargains with God, that because God might cut us a break if we give up something precious to us? No, I, I don't think that's, that's the point at all. I mean, although there are people who, who believe that, it's sort of a foxhole theology, right? Uh, and we get desperate, we make a promise, and then we have to follow through with it. I believe that God wants and desires uh, to bless us with life uh, and with wholeness. We don't have to somehow weasel it out of God. So then why is life so hard and so unfair at times? It gets back to the underlying issue here, right? This brokenness of sin that makes life hard and unfair. Why some prayers get answered and some don't remains a deep mystery to me. But I don't believe it's about technique or volume or style in order to get the desired results. We pray because relationships need communication, open, honest communication. Sometimes it's easy, sometimes it, it feels impossible, but that's, that's how relationships are, right? The thing is, God can take our, our sadness or our anger or our bargaining or whatever it is that we throw God's way. We look at the hurt, the brokenness that's all around us, and we ask or we even demand, why is this happening? What I hear the scriptures giving us is not an easy answer, though. It's not a recipe for getting what you want, but it's this witness that we are given that it's not just us who are feeling that way. It's not just us asking this question about why is life hard or unfair. We are in good company. And there are moments then when we get glimpses, reminders of where this whole story is ultimately going, this point where all things will be made right. For now, we just get glimpses, a light that appears in the darkness. Miracles remind us that we aren't alone, that pain and hurt and sorrow will not be the last word, that healing and comfort and joy will prevail in the end. Hannah's song reminds us that the story is not over yet. God is still at work. God's love will not end. There will come a day when there will be no more tears. But until that day, we walk together, reminding, comforting, bearing each other's burdens, sharing each other's joys, proclaiming the hope, giving thanks to God who never gives up on us. Now, Hannah's song will be repeated through the centuries uh, in different ways, in many uh, variations on this theme of a God who comes in to impossible situations and turns things around, right? The God who brings light to the darkness, brings hope where there is despair, healing where there is brokenness, forgiveness where there is sin, life where there is death. You know, and it's, it's all wrapped up in this one that we know as Jesus. A promise given to a frightened teenager named Mary that God was about to do something amazing in her life. That God can enter into our experience, right? All of it, even suffering and death, that we might know the depth of God's love for us. Amen. An angel went from God to a town called Nazareth to a woman whose name was Mary. The angel said to her, Rejoice, O highly favored, 
God is with you. You shall bear a child, and his name shall be Jesus, the chosen one of God most high. And Mary said, I am the servant of my God, I live to do your will. My soul proclaims your greatness, O God, and my spirit rejoices in Let us confess our faith together using words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, he seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you, and also with you. Take a moment and, and share a sign of peace with those that you may be with as you worship. Well, let us continue our, our worship with a, a time of prayer. And to help center us, we want to uh, use a, a song. Change my heart, O God. Change my heart, O God. Make it ever true. Change my heart, O God. May I be like you. Change my heart, O oh God. Make it ever true. Change my heart, O oh God. May I be like you. We pray for the church and the world and all those in need. Lord, waiting is hard. Waiting for something wonderful can make us impatient, blind to all that's before our eyes in this very moment. May we constantly find reasons to be grateful in this life, whether the blessings are large or small, 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who desire children but are unable to have them. We pray for parents who feel regret at choices they've made, for children who may feel unwanted. Lord, lead us to places and people who can heal our hearts and make us whole. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you hear the distress of your children when they cry to you. Comfort the suffering, bring joy to the grieved. Send your healing spirit on those who need it. Remember Marv Linseth and Dick Huffman, Deanna Rowan, Mary Glowitz, Boyd Huppert, Peter Kleinsmith's father, family of Janice Hansen, and, and all those we name before you in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We place, these, we place these prayers into your hands and trust that you'll be merciful to your children for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You are the potter, I am the clay. Mold me and make me, this is what I pray. Change my heart, O oh God, make it ever Change my heart, O oh God, may I be like you. Thank you for your uh, generous gifts. It's how we do our mission here at Joy. Let us pray. Lord, you gift us, gifted us with riches far beyond what we deserve. We never run out of reasons to thank you. Accept these offerings of our lives, our resources, and use them to bless the world in need of your loving example. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We continue with the uh, Holy Communion. We gather around the Lord's table, but it's not just us, right? All around the world, brothers and sisters are coming together, many in homes, just like you are, to experience grace and forgiveness and feel connected and closer to God. You may have noticed, uh, I use this uh, wooden bowl that uh, has the bread in that we use for communion. And I've, uh, I don't know if you know the story of this. This uh, actually comes from Malawi. And I like to use it because it reminds us of how big this family of God really is. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your Holy and mighty, merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and the suffering, who preached good news to the poor, who on the cross opened his arms for all. 
On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The same way after supper, he took the cup. Again, he gave thanks. He said, Drink of this, all of you. This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. Remember our new birth and his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us, bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people, fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray as our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, I invite you now to, to share a bread and wine with one another with words like this, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace now and always. Amen. Well, uh, keep our young people who are in the process of confirmation in your prayers. This weekend they're coming in, um, some uh, yesterday, some today, one family at a time, sharing their faith statements, making promises, receiving blessings. Uh, and we'll be recording it and, and sharing some of that with you next week as well, so you can be a part of this uh, as well. Again, I encourage you to make use of the Joy Church at Home resource, uh, discussion questions that help us dive in a little deeper uh, and reflect on what it is that we, we heard in our worship, our, our worship experience, and apply it to our lives. We continue to have uh, live screenings of our online worship for those of you who don't have computers at home. Uh, you're welcome to join us in the sanctuary Sunday mornings, 9.30. If you haven't made your plan on how to vote, uh, uh, I know the uh, deadline for absentee ballots may have already, already passed. Uh, but figure out what you're going to do, how you're going to make your vote count this year. And keep wearing those masks, right? Don't go out unless you have to. It, uh, the numbers are just not looking good at all. Uh, we are in very much a crisis time here, especially here in Wisconsin right now. It's not a time to, to be relaxing. Uh, um, and so um, love your neighbor, wear a mask. Following worship today, again, we'll continue. We'll have our little Zoom fellowship uh, and the link is in our, our worship resource email. Let's, uh, let's receive uh, the blessing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. 
All right, people, let's uh, stay at home and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Roll the stone away from the entrance of our hearts. May we walk into the dark with the light of peace in these eerie days. Know that we are not alone, for it's grace that makes us whole. May we grow in love. We are gonna make it through We are gonna make it through Love will do what it takes To get me to you We are gonna make it through Life is a mystery We cry Hosanna in the dark from the pit of death, you are our hallelujah song. Surviving history, Easter give life a brand new start. Healing all our broken hearts and resurrects our hope. We are gonna make it through. We are gonna make it through. Gonna make it through. Life may be a mystery, but we can't ignore the need. You've got one life. Life may be a mystery, but we can't ignore the need. Stay home for your neighbor Won't you love your neighbor Won't you love your neighbor You gotta stay home for your neighbors Cause we are gonna break it through We are gonna break it through Gonna make it through We are gonna make it through Love is gonna get us through